In this video, I will be discussing the kidney and its basic functional unit, which is called the nephron. And I'm going to be describing the path that blood and filtrate will take as it travels through the nephron and makes its way onto the bladder before it's finally excreted from your body. And so to begin with, the very first thing to understand here is the main objective. And the purpose of your kidneys uh, is mainly to excrete wastes so as your cells are living and metabolizing stuff, they're generating byproducts that aren't needed or they can't be used. And so you got to get rid of those somehow. And the other part of this is figuring out how we can control the levels of water within your bloodstream, because that is another very important topic or theme in maintaining homeostasis. And so if we were to take a look at a kidney and take a cross section of it, we're going to note how there's kind of two main areas of interest. The first area is called the renal cortex. And cortex is Latin, which means shell. So the way I like to remember it is the shell is on the outside of the kidney. So this is the renal shell in essence. And we have an inner middle region of the kidney, which is termed the renal medulla. And the reason we need to know these two structures will be important later on because when we begin to talk about the structure and function of the nephron, nephrons are these little units of many cells that will move from the renal cortex and dip into the renal medulla. And now if we were to look at an individual nephron, what we'll find is that blood will enter from an artery and then pass into something called an arteriole, which is like an artery except a little bit smaller, but it's not yet uh, the diameter or capacity of a capillary. It's a little bit larger. And so we have arterioles carrying blood at a reasonable pressure, and the blood will enter something called the glomerulus. And the glomerulus is I like to think of as the gatekeeper of your kidney. It is the gatekeeper to filtrate exiting the blood. And what's going to happen in the glomerulus is you're going to have an initial filtrate. Some fluid is going to be exiting your arterial. And because we have diffusion, we have mass transfer occurring here. What we need to know and remember is that we have to have a partial pressure difference between the glomerulus and the outside of it. And that results in the fact that uh, your arteries are going to be containing blood at a higher pressure to keep that fluid moving in a particular direction. And so from your glomerulus, we're going to have an initial filtrate exiting, and that filtrate will be collected by something referred to as Bowman's capsule. Sorry. So Bowman's capsule is the collector, as I like to remember it. And a huge theme in looking at kidneys is reabsorption. And the reason reabsorption is so important is because the initial filtrate that just left your glomerulus and entered Bowman's capsule contains a lot of stuff that you want to keep. The initial filtrate has things like glucose and small molecules such as amino acids as well as sodium ions. And these are all very important things that you want to hold on to. And in addition to that, your initial filtrate will contain wastes. But the key point here is that you're, you expended a lot of energy to obtain glucose from an external source. Your body expended a lot of energy to create some kind of specialized amino acid and you want to keep those amino acids to make proteins and you probably also spent a lot of energy to obtain some sodium ions and you want to hold on to those sodium ions because they're important in many other metabolic processes and so how are we going to hold on to those and so from bowman's capsule this contrate this uh, filtrate which is very concentrated in the good stuff that we want to get out we are going to pass it into something called the proximal convoluted tubule.
And so proximal means near, so this is near the glomerulus, and convoluted refers to the fact that it's coiled up. And what's going to happen in the proximal convoluted tubule is that we're going to begin to reabsorb mostly sodium ions. And the rate at which we are reabsorbing those sodium ions is dictated by a hormone called aldosterone. And so if concentrations of aldosterone are high, we're going to be wanting to hold on to as many sodium ions as we can. We're going to be taking as many sodium ions as we can out of the filtrate that was that would otherwise go into your urine. And because we have more sodium ions being kept inside of your body, it means that you will be more likely to hold on to water because uh, if, as we know from tonicity, water will move from areas of high concentration to low concentration. Um, and uh, the main point here is uh, we have we use aldosterone. You have el elevated levels of aldosterone when you want to hold on to sodium, uh, which will also help you keep more water in your body. And so from the proximal convoluted tubule, we're going to move into the descending loop of Henle. And so the descending loop of Henle is going to be this region right here. And the reason it's important to make the distinction of whether or not it's ascending or descending is because, as we saw here, the nephrons are dipping from the renal cortex into the renal medulla. And so a cross-section of this is going to reveal that we have our renal cortex up here and our renal medulla, sorry, down here. And the reason the renal medulla is important is because it's a very salty environment. And salty refers to having a lot of ions present, such as sodium or chloride or potassium ions. And what we know about water is that it likes to solvate those ions. And so as your filtrate moves from the proximal convoluted tubule and down the descending loop of Henle into the renal medulla, because there are so many sodium and other ions present in the renal medulla, the water is gonna to wanna to leave. It's gonna to wanna to stay in your body and not get excreted. And what's gonna happen next is we're going to enter the ascending loop of Henle And the purpose of the ascending loop of Henle is to figure out how to get the ions that are left in your filtrate into the renal medulla. So if we had some sodium ions, uh, some sodium ions remaining in your filtrate, those are gonna get pumped out actively using ATP within the ascending loop of Henle. And this is important because we want to keep the renal medulla as salty as possible so that we can keep as much water as we can so we can pull the water out from the filtrate that would have otherwise been urine. And so uh, finally what's going to happen uh, within the nephron is that we're going to enter the descending, or I'm sorry, the distal convoluted tubule. And so the distal convoluted tubule would be this structure here after the ascending loop of Henle. And the reason it's called distal is because it's far away from the glomerulus. And what's going to happen in your distal convoluted tubule is that we're going to continue to reabsorb the glucose, water, and um, amino acids that we want to hold on to. And then finally, uh, we are going to dump all of the remaining wastes and maybe some of the products we wanted to hold on to into the collecting duct. Sorry. And so the collecting duct is this beige structure. And what I hope we can see from this diagram is that the collecting duct is passing through the renal medulla, which we know is a very salty structure. And because of that, if there is more water still present in the filtrate by the point that it's dumped into the collecting duct, because the medulla is so salty, 
we can pull out some more of the water before it finally is excreted from your body. And so what controls the porosity of the collecting duct is a hormone called ADH. And ADH stands for antidiuretic hormone. It con uh, controls your collecting duct's porosity. How permeable is it to water? And so if you were dehydrated and your body needed to hold onto it all the water it possibly could, your levels of ADH are going to be elevated such that the water in the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct will be pulled out into your renal medulla and kept inside because you don't want to get rid of it. And so uh, to wrap things up after your collecting duct is done, it's going to enter the structure called the um, God, ureter. And from the ureter, it will go to the bladder and within the bladder, it will reside until you urinate. And so this is going to wrap things up for this video. I hope you guys find it useful and thanks for watching.